Hey guys, I'm back um, on the bench for my two most recent acquisitions. I've got an HP 8902A measuring receiver here, and I've also got the um, 11715A AM FM test source that goes along with it. This is a similar deal um, to the 4192 in my last video. I bought this on eBay. The seller advertised it as guaranteed to be fully functional. Um, I get it, I hook it up, and I quickly realize that's not the case. So in this video, we're going to go over what the issue is. We are going to try to troubleshoot it using the manual and um, see what the problem is. And I'm um, either going to have to get in contact with the seller and ask to send it back if it's something bad, or maybe it's something that we can fix. So if that sounds interesting to you, stick around. So before we dive in, let's just take a look at this thing. The reason I bought this is I have um, several FM signal generators and I'm not certain of their distortion spec for FM. I like to work on high-end, low distortion tuners. So what you can do with this is you can validate the distortion of your signal sources. It has a distortion analyzer built into it and a demodulator so you can um, measure the distortion of the audio frequency signal. Let's just take a look at the inside of this thing. This thing's beautiful. Look at all these SMC, SMA connectors. Definitely somewhat intimidating. This capacitor in the power supply is like seven inches tall. It's crazy. Um, this one has the option 002, which is the um, high stability oven. It doesn't have any of the other options, but I don't need them. And the 11715A is a very low distortion FM source. It's rated at below 0.025% with a deviation of 100 kilohertz or below, I believe. Um, so that on its own can be used as an FM source when you're working with really high-end tuners. Okay, so let's take a look at this quick start guide. Uh, let's try the, one of the most basic functions, using it as a frequency counter. Um, so basically it just tells you to set up your signal generator with 100 megahertz, um, 0 dBm amplitude modulation off. So let's go do that. I'm using an 8644B. Okay, so we will do frequency 100 megahertz, modulation is off, and signal level 0 dBm, amplitude 0 dBm. Okay, what it says here, press the frequency button, press the frequency key and the green automatic operation key on the 8902A. That's all it takes to configure the 8902A as an RF counter. Notice that the 8902A automatically tunes to and displays the frequency of the input signal, approximately 100 megahertz. Okay, so let's try that out. I turned this off because it's really loud. Let's turn it back on here. Takes a minute to boot up. Okay, and it should be showing 11 megahertz on the screen because the frequency key is already selected and it's already in automatic operation. But you can hear the attenuator clicking and it'll just keep doing this forever. So what I noticed is, go back over here to the signal generator. If I change the amplitude to say negative 10 dBm, it stops clicking. And there we go, we see our 100 megahertz. And at this point, I can turn on some of the other features, like let's add, sorry for the camera here, I'm kind of walking across the room. Um, let's turn on FM, 75 kilohertz deviation, um, internal source, one kilohertz, right? So we should see some FM now. Um, so I can, we can take a look at the FM, so it should see around 75 kilohertz of deviation. And we can take a look at the audio frequency, which should show one kilohertz, right? And we can then take a look at the audio distortion, which shows 0.41. Sounds about right. Now here's a trick. Let me go back over to the 8644B. I noticed if you change the synthesis mode from auto, which selects mode two, down to mode one, you'll see the distortion drop quite a bit. So I make sure to do that when I'm working on tuners. And there we go, 0 0.15, right? So, so that's good. And what I've noticed is, again back over here, I can go to around negative 30 dBm, oh, amplitude negative 30, and it'll continue to work. Um, if I drop below negative 30, it'll eventually cut out. 
and start clicking again, right? I believe the manual says it should cut off around negative 40, so not totally unexpected, but anything below negative 8 dBm, so if I go negative 7, negative 6, it'll just start clicking again, right? So let's take a look here at the diagram. This is like the first page in the manual. Let's set it down here. So here's our input. First thing it hits is this 10 dB attenuator before it goes to the RF amp. Um, so I think there's a problem with the attenuator. I think this is it right here. Um, and I found this section in the manual and we will go over that in just a second. Okay, so this is one of the first steps in the troubleshooting guide, uh, the front end check. So what it wants us to do is it wants us to set our signal generator to 11 megahertz at minus 30 dBm. And then it wants me to connect the output of the signal generator to an AC coupled scope. So let's go do that. So first let's reset the instrument, get rid of the modulation. Okay, so it wants frequency 11 megahertz, amplitude minus 30 dBm. All right, and then it wants us to take that connection and plug it into an AC coupled scope with a 50 ohm terminator. So I've got that set up here. And then what it wants us to do, yeah, hard to do this with one hand. Okay, and it wants us to adjust this signal so we see four divisions. Um, it's AC coupled already, 1x probe. Let's adjust this fine. Okay, so we should see four divisions there. Okay. Now what it wants us to do is switch the input impedance of the scope. Okay, we already did this actually. That was the step I just talked about. Um, so we have four divisions peak to peak. Okay, connect the oscilloscope's input to the end of W8 where it connects to A16J1 on the A16 board. So that's referring to this connector here. So it wants us to disconnect that and plug the scope into the end of this cable. So I guess this cable must be known as W8. So I'm gonna stop the camera for a second so I can get in there and do that and we'll get this cabling changed up. All right, so we're going to need a SMC male to BNC. We're gonna connect that here. Okay, and then we're going to disconnect the cable and terminator from the scope. It just wanted us to connect it so we could set it to four divisions. I'm gonna get rid of the terminator. We're gonna plug the end of the signal generator into the input on the um, 8902A. And then we're gonna plug this cable into the scope input. All right. So it wants us to preset the instrument. So we hold the blue button and then hit automatic operation. Okay. Let me move the camera so you can see what I'm doing here. Okay. All right. So now we have to press these special function buttons. So it wants us to check each of them. Um, we also need to figure out the pad and the amp enunciators. I don't know where those are. So we're gonna have to look for those. Let me look into that and I'll be right back. All right, well, it's the next day and I'm shooting this. I apparently um, forgot to record the next section here, but basically I found out I actually did have to leave the Terminator plugged into the scope. So this uh, next step, they want you to test this with it still terminated into 50 ohms. So what happens is I would key in special function 1.1. .1. It, would, it would work fine. It was within the 3.9 to 4.1 um, peak to peak, number of divisions. Um, as soon as I would hit 1.2, the signal would just completely disappear. Um, 1.7 worked, um, and that's plus 24 dB. And 1.8 also just completely disappeared. So what I, what I noticed is um, these two are 1.2 and 1.8, that's switching the 10 dB attenuator on. Um, so at that point I decided that there's something wrong with the 10 dB attenuator. All right, guys, I don't remember where I left off in the last video, but I have been going crazy here trying to figure this out. Um, there's reference to these pad and amp enunciators, so LEDs somewhere in the unit, um, and they tell you if the attenuator is switched in or if the RF amplifier is turned on. And I spent hours looking through the manual trying to find those. 
I was poking around with a mirror in there trying to see if they were on that A70 board up front. I couldn't find them for the life of me. Um, found the schematic for the A70 board and there's no LEDs on it. Um, now the thing is, I have a newer unit. This is a uh, serial number starts with 31, so it's from the early 90s. And my A70 part number is 08902-60064. So apparently at some point they must have got rid of those lights and I don't see any change sections in the manual um, saying that they did, but I found the schematic from the older A70 board and you can I already crumpled this up and threw it out, but I pulled it out. Uh, you can see the LEDs there. So, so we don't have those to work with, which kind of stinks. So what I'm going to do is, if you remember in the earlier video, I believe it was the first and the third tests were passing. So 0 dB, which means no attenuator and no gain. So the RF amp is off and the attenuator is off. That was fine. And the gain um, plus 24 dB, the RF amplifier seems to be working, right? So we're missing the two tests here, the minus 10 and plus 14. Um, so those are the two where the um, attenuator is on, right? So I hear the attenuator switching, so I think the switch is okay. I think the attenuator itself might be bad. So I'm going to take the front panel off of this thing, and we're going to see if we can't fish that out of there and test it on its own. I'll be back in a few minutes. Okay, so pulling the front panel off wasn't too bad. You basically just take the screws off around the outside, then you take this nut off, this end connector, and you can flip it up out of the way. Uh, that was a pleasant surprise. Um, I pulled the RF amplifier out. It basically sits in front of this attenuator here. You just disconnect the cables up top. There's four screws, and then you have to loosen the um, SMA connectors back there. And I think this is the attenuator. I can't read the part number on it. I tried it with a mirror, so I'm going to go ahead and disconnect that, and we'll take a look at it. Okay, I was incorrect. This part's um, part number 5086-7283, and it's known as U2, and it's a limiter. Here's where it is on the schematic. It is right there. We're looking for this guy, AT2. I think this might be built into U3 now. I actually see that outline there. So let's go ahead and take U3 apart and see if we can't figure anything out. All right, well, it doesn't get any better than this. Check this out, I just pulled this attenuator out and it has bad, bad written on it, so I think we found the problem. I have no idea if this can be fixed or not, but that's not good. Alright, I'm back. So I took this attenuator cover off just to take a look inside, because I've heard you can repair these. I guess there's some O-rings that go bad and you can get some watch repair O-rings. Um, and go figure, as soon as I take it apart, one of them falls out, so I'm really hoping that's what's wrong with it. Um, I saw another guy's video on YouTube here. Let me see if I got this on the screen. This guy here, ID Pro M Nut, and he's rebuilding an attenuator. It's from an 8642, I think. But I saw in his video the part number on the circuit board is the same thing. So I'm really hopeful that's it. And I mean, that little O-ring falling out right there is kind of telling. So um, I'm going to see what the seller says about sending this back or getting a refund or whatever. And um, if we come to some sort of agreement, I'm going to go ahead and fix it. So while I was troubleshooting the issue with the attenuator, before I knew it was the attenuator, I had um, gone through the manual and I found this service sheet for, um, I did this first test and it failed. I noticed there was another test you could do on the other input attenuator, which I think is a 0 to 70 dB attenuator with 10 dB steps, if I'm understanding it correctly. Um, so on service sheet 4, they have you disconnect some wires here. So this is the AT1 attenuator here. Um, so I disconnected these and I connected these um, SMA to BNC adapters. Um, I just picked this up the other day. It's a pretty cool kit. This is a $500 kit. I managed to get on eBay for $15. Bucks. Pomona, you can um, pick whatever ends you want and couple them together. Um, pretty neat, versatile. Uh, came in handy already because I, I didn't have enough um, SMA to BNCs. Um, anyways, so this is, you're testing this attenuator on its own. And I noticed I was getting some funky readings on, on these bottom two tests. So I'm a little worried about that as well. But we're going to start with the um, other 10 dB attenuator, see if we can get that squared away, and then and then uh, focus on this if we have to. So um, if, the, if me and the seller come to an agreement, I'll be back with another video. Um, if not and decide to send it in and, or send it back and get a refund, uh, then maybe I won't. So stay tuned.